name's Heather Grondin. I'm the Vice President of Communications and Stakeholder Relations with the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, and I will be your moderator for today's meeting. I would like to welcome you to the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority's annual public meeting for the 2015-2016 fiscal year. We're pleased to have so many members of the public and the and business community with us today. I would like to acknowledge uh, Douglas George, the Canadian Consul General. Um, at our head table today, we have Mr. Dwight Duncan, the chair of the WDBA Board of Directors, Mr. Michael Cotillo, WDBA's President and Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Linda Hurdle, the WDBA's Chief Financial Administration Officer, and Marie Capena, Andre Junot, and Craig Ricks, who all sit on the WDBA Board of Directors. An annual public meeting is a legal requirement for the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority as the Canadian Crown Corporation. The purpose of this meeting is to share information of our operations and activities for the 2015-16 fiscal year and to solicit feedback from the public. We are committed to keeping our stakeholders and our publics informed in recognition of the interest that stakeholders on both sides of the border have in this project, the Gordy Howe International Bridge, we are holding annual public meetings in both Windsor and Detroit. This afternoon at 2 p.m., we'll be holding a second meeting at the Michigan Outdoor Adventure Center in Detroit. To ensure that we reach as many members of the public as possible, we are webcasting this morning's meeting to those who are unable to attend in person. Uh, they will have the opportunity to view these proceedings online. As well, we will be recording both meetings and posting those videos online. Following today's presentation, WDBA will take questions from the audience. Each of you received a question card when you registered, and I would ask that you write your question and include your name on that card and pass it to one of WDBA's staff members in the room. Uh, they will bring those questions up to me and we will answer those questions today. We will make every effort to answer all questions. Um, if we are unable to get to those, we will post the question and answer on our website and follow up with you individually as needed. As I stated, today's meeting is focusing on the 2015-16 fiscal year. The financial statements for that fiscal year are included in our annual report, which is available today in hard copy and at our website, wdbridge.com. At this time, I would like to introduce the chair of the WDBA Board of Directors, Mr. Dwight Duncan, to speak. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Heather, and thank you, everyone. Bonjour, bienvenue. Um, first of all, I want to bring greetings on behalf of Minister Sohi uh, and Prime Minister Trudeau. Uh, one of the reasons we are webcasting this and recording everything is so that uh, uh, our elected officials will have access to uh, uh, this as well as the proceedings uh, so that they can understand uh, whatever concerns the community has. And I want to thank all of you uh, for attending our annual public meeting. And this annual public meeting is for the 2015-2016 fiscal year. As a Canadian Crown Corporation, the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority is required to hold an annual public meeting to coincide with the release of its annual report. The annual public meeting gives the opportunity to the public to learn more about the WDBA's work and perhaps more importantly to ask questions and receive answers. At our first annual public meeting, I committed to holding these meetings both in Windsor and Detroit in recognition of the interest that people on both sides of the border have in this once in a generation project. I'm pleased that we'll, we will be holding the Detroit meeting later today, as Heather said, at the Michigan Outdoor Adventure Center. I have been involved with the Windsor-Detroit border issue since 1988, when I was first elected to Windsor City Council. Later, as a cabinet minister and deputy premier with the Ontario government. I am thrilled to be able to continue work on what is arguably one of the most important infrastructure projects in North America, one which will deliver much needed transportation improvements, but will also provide jobs and opportunities for growth in the Windsor Detroit region. The WDBA has been successful on a number of strategic issues over the 2015-16 fiscal year. Our president and CEO, Michael Cotillo, who's sitting to my left, your right, will speak on those issues in more detail in just a few moments. 
Our successes are attributable to the dedication of the WDBA staff, the guidance of the WDBA Board of Directors and International Authority, and our close working relationship with our partners, including Infrastructure Canada, the Michigan Department of Transportation, the Michigan Governor's Office, the U.S. Federal Highway Administration, and the cities of Windsor and Detroit. WDBA is working closely with our stakeholders, many of whom are here with us today. In fact, during the 2015-2016 fiscal year, WDBA held more than 60 meetings with its stakeholders. In accordance with the crossing agreement signed by Canada and Michigan to demonstrate our commitment to fulfilling requirements, WDBA has mandated that a comprehensive community benefits plan be formulated and delivered during the construction and operation phases of the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project by the private sector partner with stringent oversight by the WDBA. This plan will contain initiatives that will have a positive impact on communities in the Windsor and Detroit areas and it is anticipated that the plan will be implemented during the construction and operational phases of the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Following consultation undertaken by the WDBA in Michigan with residents, business owners, First Nations and community leaders on both sides of the border, we have received more than 200 suggestions for community benefits. The top priorities of our stakeholders believe the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project should address at a regional level fall within five themes, namely local workforce and training strategies, construction impact and operation mitigation measures for nearby residents and businesses, community safety and connections, aesthetics and landscaping, and finally, regional economic and community development opportunities. WDBA is meeting with the proponent teams on a bi-weekly basis to discuss their proposals of which the community benefit plans are an important element. It is important to the WDBA that the community benefits plans reflect what our stakeholders have told us is important to them. To help us ensure these community priorities are captured, the WDBA has developed a guiding framework for the development and delivery of, of the Community Benefits Plan. I am pleased to share this framework with you today for the first time publicly. The iCare framework is a tool that can be used by both the WDBA and the proponent teams that is reflective of what we have heard at numerous meetings in Canada and the United States. Let's take a moment to break the framework down. Integrated community benefits shall be an integral component of the project carried out during the design, build, and operation periods. Collaborative. Community benefits shall reflect the host communities, Windsor and Detroit, and regional input, and be delivered through partnerships, ensuring that the interests of the region are taken into account. Accessible. Community benefits shall be easy to understand, easily accessible, regularly measured, and publicly reported. Regional. Community benefits shall be reflective of the character of the Windsor-Detroit region, tailored specifically for the region, and provide value to the region. Enterprising. Community benefits shall be comprised of new methods, ideas, and innovative approaches to engage the region in the project and benefit the region from the project. As we have done in the last 18 months, the WDBA will continue to meet and listen to its stakeholders, and I look forward to continuing our partnership as we build the bridge to our future together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. I would now like to welcome WDBA's President and Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Michael Cotillo, to speak. Good morning, bonjour. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to say thank you uh, to all of you for joining us today in person and online for uh, our annual public meeting. Uh, thank you also to our chair for, uh, for your kind words to start this meeting. Since our inaugural public meeting in February of 2016, WDBA and its partners have progressed and have made many advancements on the Gordie Howe International Bridge project. And you do, we do have an annual report. The theme of this year's annual report is moving forward. And as you'll see in a short video in a moment, 
the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority has definitely been moving forward. So with that, Heather. So you could just bring your attention to the screen. Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority, WDBA, is pleased to present its annual report for 2015-2016. Our annual report and the public meetings are a time for us to share everything we've done over the past year. Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority is a not-for-profit Canadian Crown Corporation wholly owned by the Government of Canada. WDBA is responsible for the management of the procurement process for the design, build, finance, operation, and maintenance of the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project through a public-private partnership known as a P3. It will select the P3 partner and manage the P3 project agreement and will be responsible for project oversight of construction and operation of the new crossing. The Canada-Michigan Crossing Agreement provides the framework for the delivery of the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Michigan is WDBA's partner in the delivery of the Gordie Howe International Bridge and plays a key role in terms of property acquisition in Michigan, utility relocations, and assisting in project coordinating activities. As well, the Michigan Department of Transportation, MDOT, plays a key role in the P3 procurement process. There are four components to the Gordie Howe International Bridge project. The bridge. The Gordie Howe International Bridge will be six lanes, 2.5 kilometers or 1.5 miles, and once complete, will be among the top five longest bridges in North America. Canadian Port of Entry. The Canadian Port of Entry will be situated on a 53 hectare, 130 acre site. It includes border inspection facilities for both passenger and commercial vehicles, maintenance facilities, and the tolling operation for both the US bound and Canada bound traffic. Once complete, it will be the largest Canadian Port of Entry on the Canada US border. US Port of Entry. The U.S. Port of Entry will be situated on a 60-hectare, 145-acre site. It includes border inspection facilities for both passenger and commercial vehicles, and once in service, will be one of the largest ports of entry in North America. Michigan Interchange The Michigan Interchange will consist of the connecting ramps to and from the U.S. Port of Entry, and local road improvements required to fit the new ramps into the interstate system. It includes four new road bridges, five new pedestrian bridges over I-75, ramps crossing the railway and connecting I-75 to the U.S. Port of Entry, and local road improvements. The theme of this year's annual report is moving forward, and Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority has done just that in its second year of operation. The key objective for the 2015-2016 fiscal year was to launch the public-private partnership P3 procurement process. On July 20, 2015, WDBA issued the request for qualifications known as the RFQ, the first stage in the procurement process to select a private sector partner. On January 20, 2016, WDBA announced the respondent teams that will move forward in the request for proposals, the RFP stage of the P3 procurement process. WDBA, throughout fiscal year 2015-2016, has undertaken a wide range of activities. These strategic priorities build on the accomplishments of the previous year's priorities. During the 2015-2016 fiscal year, WDBA continued to build a competent and qualified team. As of March 31st, 2016, WDBA staff complement total 40 persons. In fiscal year 2015-2016, 351 properties on the U.S. side of the project were acquired through funds provided by WDBA. 
Construction of a new 4.3 kilometer perimeter access road started in fiscal year 2015-2016. The road will provide public access to private and public properties adjacent to the Canadian Port of Entry. Utility relocation in Windsor and Detroit also moved forward in the 2015-2016 fiscal year. Early works at the Canadian Port of Entry. These preparatory activities have dramatically changed the 53 hectare, 130 acre site and include the installation of 4.6 kilometers of exclusion fence, 21 utility poles, 500 meters of utility trench, a 7.5 million liter stormwater management font, 900 meters of storm sewers, 29,000 quick drains, 91,000 tons of aggregate, 800,000 tons of granular material, 61 settlement monitors. As well, 2,500 species at risk plants were relocated and 90,000 cubic meters of topsoil were removed. WDBA is proud of the progress that has been made during fiscal year 2015-2016. We invite you to join in the excitement as we build the largest and most ambitious binational border infrastructure project along the Canada-United States border. There are many ways to stay connected with us. For more information about WDBA and the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project, visit our website and follow us on social media. As you've seen, uh, WDBA reached several significant milestones during fiscal 2015-16 that helped fulfill our key objectives of launching our public-private partnership procurement process to select a P3 private sector partner that would design, build, finance, operate, and maintain the Gordie Howe International Bridge, and also helped us fulfill our strategic priorities of property acquisition, acceleration of early works in Windsor, and utility relocation in both Windsor and Detroit. On, uh, in April of 2015, the International Authority approved the Michigan Department of Transportation's plan to begin property acquisition in Michigan. And Michigan, through the Michigan Department of Transportation, is responsible for all U.S. property acquisition for the project with funds provided by the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. And in fiscal year 2015-16, WDPA provided more than $22 million U.S. in funding for the acquisition of 351 properties for the demolition, for survey work, for preliminary site investigation, for utility relocation, and other project-related activities in Michigan. Significant work has been done and work continuing to have the U.S. side of the project ready for the eventual private sector partner. In May of 2015, through a joint Canada-Michigan announcement, the new bridge was officially named the Gordie Howe International Bridge in recognition of the close relationship between Canada and the United States. And in June of 2015, WDBA launched a request for tender for the construction of a perimeter access road, the relocation of utilities, and the placement of fill at the Canadian Port of Entry. The contract, which we know as the Early Works contract, was awarded in August of 2015, and work began shortly thereafter in September of 2015. And the early work activities during the 15-16 fiscal year were significant and included the installation of 4.6 kilometers of wildlife exclusion fencing, 560 kilometers of wick drains to accelerate the settlement of soil, 
approximately one kilometer of storm sewers, 500 meters of joint utility trench, and almost a million tons, or about 24 shiploads of granular material to accelerate the settlement of the underlying soils within the Canadian port of entry. And for those that were able to join us last November when we did our little walkabout, you would have observed the considerable amount of work that has been done thus far and the incredible transformation to the landscape that will be home to the Canadian port of entry. And we actually are planning to host the second walkabout of the Canadian port of entry later this spring. And I encourage all of you to come out for that particular one. And I promise this time I won't be having the same comments as last time. Uh, in July of 2015, WDBA launched the Public-Private Partnership, or P3, procurement process to select our private sector partner. The first stage of the two-stage procurement process, known as a request for qualifications, began in July of 2015. And as was seen on the uh, previous uh, video, six submissions were received in response to the RFQ when it closed in October of 2015. And in January of 2016, we named the three shortlisted respondents who would be invited to participate in the second stage of the procurement process, the request for proposals. And in December of 2015, we had the, honor, the privilege of hosting the Honorable Amarjeet Sohi, the Minister of Infrastructure and Communities who visited our site. And at the time, the minister thanked us for, its, for WDBA's efforts and recognized the new bridge as a critical part of the government's commitment to grow the economy and create opportunities. And in February of 2016, WDBA and Hydro One finalized our agreement to relocate transmission and distribution assets. And we know that as the transmission asset modification agreement. And it provided for the relocation of hydro lines that crossed uh, the, actually the major high voltage hydro lines that crossed the Canadian port of entry and is yet another pivotal step towards the construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge. Throughout the year, various activities related to U.S. utilities progressed, including AT&T relocation, relocation design with DTE Energy, the, uh, DT Energy, Electric and Gas, and the start of the ITC Transmission Utilities Relocation, and completion of various studies for Detroit Water Sewage Department, water and sewer systems that were completed, and the re rehabilitation scope of work was actually defined. So I'm very proud of the work that's been accomplished during 2015-16 fiscal year. And I'd like to take the, the time to thank our WDBA executive team for their leadership, including Heather Grondin, our Vice President of Communications and Stakeholder Relations, Linda Hurdle, our Chief Financial Administrative Officer, Leslie Martin, our Executive Vice President of Engineering and Operations, and Marta Liardi Anderson, our Vice President of P3 Procurement. And of course, a special thank you to our dedicated staff for their many hours of work and dedication to this project that will literally change the landscape of both Windsor-Essex County and Detroit. I'd also like to recognize our close collaboration with the Michigan Department of Transportation, the Office of the Governor of Michigan, and the U.S. Federal Highway Administration, and of course, our Government of Canada partners, particularly Infrastructure Canada. At WDBA, we're eager to continue moving forward to the next steps in the construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project, the largest border infrastructure project along the Canada-U.S. border. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cotillo. At this point, I ask Ms. Linda Hurdle, our Chief Ad Financial Administration Officer, to present the financial statements. Thank you, Heather. Good morning. Bonjour. Um, fiscal year 2015-16 was our second year of operations. I think it's fine. No, no, it's fine. Uh, and as Mike has mentioned, uh, this was a year where many strides were made uh, in achieving WDBA strategic priorities, specifically around property acquisition in Windsor and Detroit, acceleration of the early works, 
and utility relocation in both uh, Windsor and Detroit as well. Work in progress in these priorities along with WDBA building its, its operations are reflected throughout the uh, financial results of the corporation. Uh, to support its activities, WDBA received $133.5 million in appropriation in 2015-16. The appropriations were used to fund property acquisition activities uh, in Michigan, the early works uh, in Windsor, Canadian utility relocation, uh, as well as design and engineering costs to support the Petrie procurement process, and of course, WDBA's uh, operations. Um, WDBA incurred $23 million in direct project costs. Uh, most of these costs were again driven by the commencement of many activities related to, to the project. Uh, as well, uh, WDBA incurred $5.6 million in internal services costs, and those are the cost of WDBA's operations. They'll include salaries and benefits, facilities, uh, support costs for the International Authority, and other support costs for the organization. Um, the commencement of property acquisition, the early works, the utility relocations, which we've, we've been talking about, you can see the progress in these activities and the, really the increase in activities throughout the financial statements, especially on the statement of financial position. You, you can see there's a real momentum being built uh, throughout the organization. Uh, our annual report includes the fully audited financial statements, and uh, I believe many of you have, have been able to pick up a copy. It's available at the front. As well, it's available online uh, on our website. And uh, we welcome any additional questions on our financial statements, either today or uh, at a later date. Thank you, Ms. Hurdle. And now I would like to ask our board some questions that we have received in advance of today's meeting. As a reminder, when you came in, you were given a comment card, a question card. If you have any questions, please fill those out. Um, a WDBA staff person will pick it up if you hold it up, and we will get to those questions. For those in attendance who have questions and you write your name on the card, there will be an opportunity for a follow-up question once a response has been given. Okay. So our first question, can WDBA play a role in providing a trail connection between the bridge and the Herb Gray Parkway Trail? And also, is there an opportunity for water access uh, to, the cu to the customs of the Canadian POE for paddlers, canoers, etc.? Thank you for the question. As, uh, as we announced earlier, uh, we're actually having, uh, we're allowing pedestrians and, and cyclists to actually use, uh, use the new bridge. Um, and that was a, a, welcomed, uh, a welcomed announcement, I know. And so we've put it out to say that we, we're, we've worked closely with uh, Canada Border Services Agency and Customs and Border Protection to allow this connection to occur. And we're looking forward to seeing how our stakeholders and our partners can actually work to integrate that, uh, that multi-use path, those bike lanes, into other existing bike lanes. So we see a tremendous potential uh, that can come about because of that. Um, as was shown in the video, we're, ha we're building a perimeter access road which basically rings the Canadian port of entry. And for those that were able to uh, join us on our walkabout, you would have seen the construction there. And so the public will be allowed to use that particular, it's a public road, uh, along with the sidewalk. And so we also see the opportunity for bike lanes to be, uh, to be on that particular facility. So I think comprehensively, uh, the, the opportunities are there to make uh, strong connections uh, with various uh, bike paths. Uh, we have rebuilt the Broadway drain, so there is access from the Broadway drain at the, at the perimeter access or the Canadian port of entry. Thank you. Uh, what is the timetable for work to begin? Well, lo and behold, work actually has begun. For those that were on the site, you'll see that there's a lot of work. But if the question I know is related to when is the actual construction for the bridge going to start, other than the, than the early works. Uh, we're currently in the middle of a procurement process, the request for proposal. Uh, we're hoping to get submissions back by towards the end of the year. Uh, we'll take a number of months to, uh, to evaluate those, and we hope to have a private sector signed up 
in the May-June timeframe next year, and we very much expect construction to start thereafter. Thank you. Uh, what will happen to WDBA once the bridge is in operation, and do you anticipate additional jobs to be created? Good question. Um, WDBA was set up as a Crown Corporation to not only undertake the procurement process to select a private sector partner, but to also oversee the operations of the new crossing uh, in perpetuity. So WDBA will be around a long time. I won't, but WDBA <laughs> will be around a long time. Um, so. There are phenomenal opportunities at WDBA, both now and in the future, because we're going to have to oversee the private sector who are going to operate the, uh, the crossing for us. And when I mean operate, I've, asked, I've been asked the question, they're gonna operate the Canadian Plaza. They're not gonna replace the CBSA officers. What they're going to do, they're gonna provide custodial functions in maintaining the buildings, maintaining the grounds, and they'll also collect tolls on our behalf. And Linda, they're gonna deposit the money into our account, so they're not gonna to touch the money. So we're gonna oversee that. We're gonna set the tolls, private sector is gonna collect it on our behalf, and they're actually gonna, they're going to operate not only the Canadian port of entry, the bridge, but also the US port of entry. So, Long, long answer to, yes, there's many opportunities now and many more in the future. Thank you. Will the new bridge accommodate reverse inspections, reverse customs? Right now we have that uh, as you're coming into, uh, if, you're, if you're going from Canada into the U.S., that you will have, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll go through the customs functions in the U.S. and customs functions uh, in, uh, in Canada. So there, there's opportunities for that, but right now it is that you get inspected in the country as you enter the country. Great, thank you. Uh, when will land be acquired in the U.S., and when will construction of the plaza in the U.S. begin? Okay, I'll deal with the construction first. The construction is going to start on the project as a whole at the same time. It's not as if something's gonna start on the Canadian side and then we'll hire another contractor to work on the U.S. side. Everything happens together. So as I mentioned, once we select a private partner, again, the April, May, uh, sorry, May, June of next year timeframe, we anticipate the construction will start. And given the size of the project and the magnitude of the project, I anticipate that construction will start on all activities uh, at the same time. And now that I've answered the second question, I forgot the first. Uh, land acquisition in the U.S. Land acquisition is moving well. Uh, about 60% of the land has been acquired in the, in the U.S. and we don't see any problems moving forward. You haven't asked the question on the Canadian side. All lands on the Canadian side have been acquired. Okay, thank you. Uh, this next one has a number of questions. Uh, the first question is, will some of the costs of the project be part of the NAFTA renegotiations? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, the, the one piece of good news, listen, I know everybody, we were all, every time there's been a change of government on either side of the border, we've all gotten nervous, right? I mean, I remember when Mr. Trudeau formed a government, people were worried, is the bridge going to go on? And, and I think when President Trump was elected, there was some anxiety. Um, when the Prime Minister and President met in February, they issued a joint communique, which is uh, about, that's a key document, and the only project mentioned in that document was the Gordie Howe Bridge, and that the language, as I recall, said that both governments are committed to f completing the project in an expeditious fashion. And so, um, our American partners are working at the federal level, at the state level and at the city level, uh, very actively with us. Uh, there is a municipal election in Detroit this year. There is a gubernatorial election next year in Michigan. Governor Snyder is term limited, which means we will have a new governor of Michigan uh, in November of uh, 2018. 
but I do like to remind people that there is close to two billion dollars in the ground on this border crossing already. When you count the Herb Gray Parkway, remember that was built to service this new bridge. When you count uh, the early works projects, including um, including removing the level crossings at uh, Howard Avenue and Walker Road, the rebuilding of the tunnel plaza. When you add all that money up, it was all part of the bigger border plan that had been signed off on by the governments of Canada, the governments of the United States, the state of Michigan, and the province of Ontario. There's already $2 billion in the ground. And uh, so this project is well on its way. The first formal process began in 2001, first formal process. And that is how long this project has been going on. I was considerably slimmer at the time, and uh, Michael had considerably more hair. But um, it, it, this is by definition a long process. It's very complex. I've, uh, I've come to learn uh, both through the parkway and now through this project just how complex it is. And what makes this really interesting is there's an international boundary. Um, we're doing work on, in two countries, remember, and we have to respect the laws of two countries. Um, we have to respect the needs of two countries. Um, and, uh, but I'm very pleased that uh, we've now had, I think, well, let's count. The first president was George W. Bush, Barack Obama. We've had three presidents of the United States, Paul Martin, Sean Kretchen, Stephen Harper, of course, who initiated this process, four prime ministers of Canada, countless governors, countless premiers, of all political stripes, I might add. And uh, the project continues on. And, and I hope you'll have a chance to get out and see the site this spring, because it's, it's, really, uh, it's really coming along. And, and, and it's really quite something to see. So uh, I guess that answers the question. Thank you. At the Canadian Port of Entry, will the stormwater management ponds be located outside of the perimeter fence? So that would be the perimeter fence surrounding the customs functions. Um, some of them will. I think there's three. I think two are, one is not. So uh, yes and no. Okay, great. Uh, will there be an open call for public art opportunities as part of this project? Public art, yeah. Sure, I'll answer this one. Uh, public art is an important component of this project. It was committed to under the Detroit River International Crossing Environmental Assessment. Uh, that is part of our procurement process, so we are limited in terms of the type of information that we can share, but we can share that there will be public art and we will have opportunities for the community to comment on that. And the next question, will there be public consultation on architecture and on landscape? Sure, and I'll answer that one as well. Uh, there will be opportunities for community engagement on uh, the look and feel of the project and on the landscaping. The look and feel of the project and the landscaping is a continuation of the work that was done during the Detroit River International Crossing study. And the themes and the looks and the input that was provided all those years ago are being reflected in the procurement documents now. Post-financial close, there will be opportunities for the community to see how those ideas and thoughts from the study phase have been reflected in the current design. And Heather, maybe I can answer as well. Once we go into operation, this isn't just about constructing and walking away. This is about constructing and having the, op the project and the operations fit in as good neighbors with, with others. So, There'll be opportunities for the, for the communities to continue to be involved in the operation and what happens in interacting with us and with, uh, with our new concessionaire who's going to operate this for us. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Hanna, do you have any follow-up questions to those? No. No? Okay, thank you. Actually, I actually think that's the last question unless there have been any more questions written. Um, is it written that the mandate of the WDBA is to alleviate in the interim the truck tra traffic on Huron Line? That's part of the parkway. Is it written? 
yeah, is it written? Oh, sorry, is it within the mandate of WDBA to alleviate in the interim the truck traffic on Huron Line? Our mandate is to, uh, my mandate was to start up WDBA, and WDBA's mandate is to run a procurement process and construct the, uh, the new crossing. In the process, though, in the construction of, uh, of the new crossing, we are going to see how our crossing and our project fits into the overall transportation system of the area. And as the chair has mentioned earlier, there's already $2 billion of money invested in the, in the, in the area that actually connect into our project. And an integral part of that is the Herb Gray Parkway, that, which is going to lead the traffic to our, uh, to our new crossing. In doing that, I'm confident that uh, some traffic that's currently on Huron Church will, in fact, uh, come off of Huron Church and, uh, and use the, uh, the new crossing. Uh, some of the advantages that we see as to why people will do that, uh, first, there is uh, trip time savings, but more importantly, trip time repeatability, so that the truckers and others know that a good day it's a quick crossing on a bad day it's a quick crossing with a little bit more time but so that that whole trip time repeatability so we do see alleviating some of the traffic on uh, on Huron Church and uh, on, uh, in other uh, on other areas okay great and this question uh, why is the opening of Broadway being delayed for so long? Uh, Broadway has been closed for almost two years and has remained closed for another se uh, five to seven. Um, as construction over Ojibwe is to join the parkway, Broadway can help ease some traffic interruption. I actually think this might be not of our project. Broadway itself, for the, uh, for the person asking the question, um, it was closed as we were reconstructing it. Uh, we're also going to have a fair bit of activity in and around uh, the Broadway Ojibwe area, simply because uh, Ministry of Transportation is going to be constructing what we know as Bridge B1. The province is, well, we're all very innovative in naming these bridges. Bridge B1 is the bridge that's actually going to take traffic from the Herb Gray Parkway into our, into our Canadian Plaza. So there's going to be a fair bit of work that's going, to be, uh, that's going to be going on there, as well as some relocation of some high voltage lines uh, from overhead to underground. So there will be ongoing need to, uh, to, to have construction in that area. So that may be one of the reasons why it has not uh, been reopened at this time. And are there any more uh, questions? But Heather, for the, for the person that asked the question on Broadway, you'll also appreciate, and those that walked on the site, and again, I urge you all to come back soon, we'll let you know when it is, to have a look at the transformation that has occurred through that area, and look forward as to the art of the possible once all the grass comes back in and the, and the bike paths will be in place. Okay, and I believe this will be the final question, unless anyone's writing any more. In regard to economic development in our region, what partners are WDBA working with to encourage logistics and trades-related jobs in the region? Well, we, uh, we've engaged the Cross-Border Institute to help us with that. Uh, that was a million dollar investment um, we made. In addition, we have ongoing uh, meetings, discussions with uh, folks who might have an interest in developing projects around this, uh, whether it's uh, large investors in uh, transportation related industries and so on. Uh, the Development Commission, the City of Windsor have been really working hard to make sure that we uh, optimize this project. Um, I believe the bike lanes are a huge tourism opportunity. Uh, the Mayor of Detroit, I met with him last week. They are laying out their plans. I think there was some media attention to this uh, around how they're going to run bike lanes up to the new, uh, up to the new border crossing so that uh, we will connect both sides of the border. I think there's a huge tourism opportunity there. 
um, logistics. Um, you know, if you look at the cities of uh, Brampton and Mississauga, a lot of folks work in logistics, and there's a lot of opportunity for freight consolidation, so on, that should be able to happen down here as well. And uh, there's activity, I know, by private investors on both sides of the border who are actively looking at this. And um, I think that, uh, I think that uh, we will continue to, to work uh, with uh, the city, Mayor Dilkins, uh, Economic Development Commission um, to make sure that as a community, as a region, in Essex County as well, I should say, uh, that we optimize this. Um, and, um, you know, we've, we've, we've gone to the point where the Cross Border Institute's actually going to be studying this issue and giving us specific recommendations that we, of course, once the work is done, will make public and hopefully will help form the kind of the discussion that we as a community will have about how we optimize this opportunity. And I should say, uh, with the size of this project, uh, this is a, an enormous amount of money that's going to come into this region in a relatively short period of time. Um, there will be construction spin-offs in, initially, of course, uh, which will help uh, St. Clair College, University, or all participating in making sure that we have the skill sets available to fill jobs here. Uh, same thing is happening on the Detroit side, I should say to you. Um, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunities that will present themself, themselves, excuse me, to this community as we, uh, as we move forward. Thank you. Any further questions? No? Uh, before we conclude today's meeting, I would like to acknowledge Member of Par Parliament Brian Massey who has joined us. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, we will be posting all the materials from today's meeting on our website over the coming days. Uh, we invite you to join our email list to receive updates about WDBA and the Gordie Howe International Bridge Project. You can do that through the homepage of our website. On behalf of WDBA, I thank you for the interest in, the, in our organization and in the project. And for those of you who have joined us via webcast, thank you and thank you for the interest. The webcast will now be ending and that concludes our meeting. Thank you.